Okay, welcome to another day, another lesson in geometry. Uh, this will be the last section of chapter 3, uh, section 3.6. Uh, a couple little theorems about perpendicular lines. And uh, we will be using uh, the distance formula in this section as well. So. Proof theorems about perpendicular line. Okay, all right. How do you find the distance between a point and a line? And the objective today will be students will be able to find the distance between a point and a line. Well, hmm. So let's review the distance formula. Um. Oh, whoops. Back that. Let me back that up a little bit. Okay. So the distance formula, in case you forgot it, it's equal to square root x2 minus x1. And then you take that quantity and you square it. And you add that to the quantity over here, y2 minus y1 and you square that one okay so now what you need to do is put these numbers in here and do the arithmetic so this is what we could call x1 and y1 and this could be x2 and y2 okay so uh, you just need to put the numbers in here. So continuing, we get um, 5 minus 2. We square that. We add that to 7 minus 3. And we're going to square that. And then we just need to take the square root of all that business. Okay, well, so this portion here looks like 3. Then you square that, you're going to get 9. Okay. All right. And then uh, 7 minus 3, of course, is 4. And if you square that, you're going to get 16. Okay. And so 9 plus 16 is equal to the square root of 25. And, of course, the square root of 25 is just simply 5. So the distance from this point, 2, 3, to 5, 7, is 5. Okay. Now, it might be worthwhile to look at the graph real quick just to see what we did. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So basically 2, 3 would be right about here. And 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, 5, 7 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be over, over here or so. And what we found was this distance, that distance from here to here. Well, isn't that nice? I sense all the delighted feelings in your heart already. <sighs> yeah, right. Okay, so you probably already learned the distance formula from uh, Pythagorean's theorem. Uh, or from algebra, one of those places. Probably should have seen it before. In any event, those are kind of the problems that we'll have to do later on in this study guide and also on the homework assignment as well so that's a good little warm-up problem hmm. let's see here's another little warm-up problem let's see if the measure of DBC is 90 degrees DBC oh so this is 90 degrees over here okay if that's 90 degrees by the way that means it's a right angle right all right what is the measure ABD well if you notice there is a straight line here coming across this way okay and it looks like to me there's two angles that form 
that straight line. So they are adjacent angles, which uh, I remember, let's see, they're called a linear pair. Well, so I have a linear pair here. And I also remember a theorem a while back, it said linear pairs are always supplementary. And supplementary means that these two angles must add up to be 180. Well, so if this is 90 degrees, that means this one over here is 90 degrees. Oh, now by the way, that means it's a right angle also. Mm hmm Well, this idea also is a theorem that's going to be very similar to what we just did right here. So uh, let's continue. Here's a new theorem. Uh, theorem 3.8, it says that two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like the warm-up problem we just did. Um, remember, uh, in this case here, instead of saying that we have the right angles, we're going to say that they're perpendicular. But what is perpendicular when we say two lines are intersecting at right angles? If two lines are perpendicular, they form two right angles, is what we're getting at also. And we're also, well, in this theorem, it's just saying that those two angles are congruent, okay? Uh, so if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, all right, those are congruent, then the lines are perpendicular. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, Here's another one. Theorem 3.9. If two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form four right angles. Mm hmm. And um, this seems like uh, like it's related to the previous theorem. Uh, previous theorem says that you have perpendicular lines here if those two are congruent and you have a linear pair. This one, we have two lines that intersect and we just found out from the warm-up problem that those two angles would add up to 90. Well, it shouldn't surprise you too much that those two angles on the bottom would also be 90. So that turns out to give us four angles that are 90. And so all four of these are gonna be right angles. Okay, so not surprising. So let's try a problem. Huh, this section seems so hard so far. I don't know if I can do it. Hmm. In the diagram at the right, AB is perpendicular to BC. What can we conclude about angles one and two? Well, um, since they're perpendicular, since these lines are perpendicular, Definition of perpendicular says we get a couple right angles. So I could say that, oh, and I can also say they're congruent, okay? Because there's a linear pair right here. Remember that first theorem we looked at says this is a linear pair, all right? And so, well, I think what we could say is that angle one, the measure of angle one, is equal to the measure of angle two, and it's equal to 90 degrees. I think that's what we can say. We can say, therefore, that's the symbol for therefore, it's not a gang symbol. Therefore, we have, have two right angles. Um, I think that's what we can conclude. All right, easy enough, huh? Also, let's see what they say. A, B, and B are perpendicular. So theorem 3, 9, they form four right angles. So you conclude that they are right angles. Hmm, okay. Sounds good. Okay, so now we have another theorem, 3, 10. It says, okay, if two sides of two adjacent acute angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. Okay, so remember that complementary here simply means that uh, the two angles add up to be 90 degrees. Add to 90, okay, they add up to be 90 degrees. So, 
In other words, you could put a plus sign right here, and you could say equal 90. Uh, all right, that's an easy term too. I mean, it's pretty easy stuff so far. So, let's see. Given that a angle ABC, ABC is equal or congruent to ABD, what can we conclude about angles three and four? Well, according to theorem 3.8, 3.8 said, if this angle and this angle are congruent, then the lines are perpendicular, right? Or you have perpendicular here. So that means that's a right angle here, which means this side over here is 90 degrees. It means this side over here must be 90. So it, what it means then is that angles three and four must be complementary. So angle three and angle four are complementary. angles okay all right so that's not too bad there I mean explain how do you know well um, according to theorem 3.8 let's back up there okay 3.8 said uh, if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles then the lines are perpendicular and it, and then we found out from 3.9 if the lines are perpendicular then they're all right angles so there you have it and so we found out that let's review it real quick we found out first of all that this was 90 degrees this is 90 degrees because they're congruent and there are right angles they're perpendicular so that means a right angle there and a right angle there and so, since you have a right angle over here, it means it's 90 degrees, so we know that they're complementary. Well, so far it's kind of boring. Hmm. All right, so here's another theorem about perpendicular stuff. If a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. So what it's saying is that, look, you have this fact first, okay, then you have this fact is second, okay. Now that's only the case, that's only the case if you have, if you have parallel lines, you see, and we have parallel lines. So, uh, if a transversal, now by transversal, remember it's a, it's, a, it's a line that intersects two other lines at two different points. So we do have a transversal, that's what J is right here. Um, if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other one. Well, that, that seems obvious because they'd have to have the same slope right and uh, if the slope here is is a perpendicular slope then the slopes here would have to be perpendicular hmm well that seems pretty obvious so far here's another theorem about perpendiculars let's see here uh, in a plane, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they're parallel to each other. So, what this one is, is basically, it's the converse. Um, it says, if you have this and this, okay, uh, then you find out that these lines are parallel. Okay, by the way, we kind of know that also because look, look, there's a, uh, let's, let's see why we know this real quick. It's pretty obvious. What kind of angles are these two? 
um, they are com they're not complementary they're corresponding right uh, if you look at this this is a transversal right and since that's a right angle this angle here is congruent to this angle here right and we learned way earlier in chapter 3 section 3.4 or so that if the corresponding angles are congruent then the lines are parallel so that's a pretty easy theorem to prove I just proved it <laughs> well okay let's keep rolling um, I think we're getting up to the hardest portion of the chapter now no not yet uh, that's when we get to the distance portion okay so determine which of the lines if any must be perpendicular okay oh well here's the corresponding angle idea this angle here is congruent to this angle over here and if you notice we have a transversal this line D is a transversal because it intersects two other lines there's the two other lines two different points and according to section 3.4 if the corresponding angles are congruent that means that this line here is parallel to this one and we just learned from the previous theorem that if one of these lines is perpendicular and you have parallel lines then so is the other one so we're gonna say that that's perpendicular that's uh, determine which of the other lines if any must be perpendicular uh, so we're gonna say line A is perpendicular to this line over here line C explain your reasoning well it's because because uh, number one we have let me back that up let's write this out here a little bit we have corresponding angles angles congruent that are congruent okay so that's where we had right here we have corresponding angles congruent that then means that uh, line A is parallel to line B. And once we have that, then we can say uh, line A is perpendicular to line C because of theorem there was a theorem I think it was 3-11 uh, three or 3-10 that said if one of these is perpendicular the other one must be perpendicular if you have parallel lines so there you go we have the explanation all right here yay <laughs> alright well uh, B and C are perpendicular by corresponding angles. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there you have it also. Um, so you're going to have a couple tricky diagrams to deal with. Um, and let's be careful here. We don't want to make assumptions when we have our diagrams. Is B parallel to A? Is line B parallel to A? Well, because of these two right angles, you have a transversal. Um, this is a 90 degree angle, that's a 90 degree angle. And um, uh, we, we have a theorem that says if you have one right angle, you're gonna get four right angles in here. And if you have a right angle there, then this angle here is congruent to this angle here, right? And those are corresponding angles, so that means that these lines here are parallel. So, yes, we could say yes. Yes, because 
um, because corresponding corresponding oh my goodness who writes this bad anyways because the corresponding angles are congruent okay let's just leave it at that uh, how about is B perpendicular to C is this line well yeah we have that the lines are parallel already we established that and this one's perpendicular already and there was that theorem that said look if one of these is perpendicular then so is the other one so yes yes because we have parallel lines um, oh my goodness parallel lines well maybe I should write it this way and to say uh, line A is parallel to B then by theorem I think it was 3-11 3-11 or 3-10 if you have one perpendicular angle then the other one's perpendicular so so then by theorem 3-11 B is perpendicular to C. Oh my, this is tough stuff. Okay, so now we get to the distance stuff. All right, the distance from a point to a line is the length. <coughs> oh man, uh, I'm allergic to math. It's terrible. Okay, so the distance from a point to a line is the length of a perpendicular segment it's always the length of a perpendicular segment. This perpendicular segment is the shortest distance. Okay, so what it's saying is that when we're talking about distance from a point to a line, we're going to go the shortest distance. In other words, we don't go from here to here and call that a distance. Okay, the distance is always going to be the shortest. And when you, when you go the shortest, it's going to make a perpendicular. So you get always a right angle in there. Okay, so that's one of the things we're reading about here. Okay. Uh, what else are we thinking about? The distance between two parallel lines. How do we do that? Okay. The distance between two parallel lines is the length of any perpendicular segment joining the two. So you could use this one, or you can use this one. Or you can use another one. As long as you have perpendicular, two perpendiculars there, you can join them together. All right, all right, all right. Sounds good. Okay, whoop de doo All right, so, okay, so let's take a look here at an application problem. <clears throat> here we have a partial map of a town that's drawn on a graph where units are measured in feet. Okay. Line HL represents Main Street. So that's this street here and CM represents 4th Avenue point L represents the library C represents the center of town H represents the high school and M represents the medical center okay so we're gonna try some uh, distance problems here it says uh, find the distance between the medical center to the high school. Okay. Well, click on my pen here. So the medical center, which is right here, to the high school right here. Well, this is a horizontal distance, so we're just looking for this distance here. And uh, we can just count off the distance using this length here on this grid here that we have. Now this is just a straight horizontal distance. Now on our previous slide we said the distance from a point to a line always has to be perpendicular. Uh, 
but uh, we're not finding the shortest distance in this case <laughs> the shortest distance would probably be right here somewhere because they'd make a perpendicular so this obviously is not going to be the shortest uh, distance to the line itself uh, but in any event that's 100 that's 200 300 400 500 600 700 so this total distance is 700 and the unit we were told was feet so that's 700 feet so that takes care of part a how about part b how far away is the medical center medical center um, from the center of town along 4th Avenue alright so we want to find out this distance well to do that we can just use a regular distance formula distance is equal to the square root we did this like on our warm-up problem in the beginning of the class uh, it was x2 minus x1 and then you square that and you add that to y2 minus y1 and then you square that and that's how we can find this distance just use those coordinates now what we need then are the coordinates right here uh, the coordinates right there looks like to me the x coordinate would be 500 so it's going to be 500 and the what's the y coordinate the y coordinate right here is 600 and then we need the coordinates down here um, the coordinates right here the x coordinate is 900 okay and the y coordinate is 300 so we have our coordinates now let's just keep track here if this is my x1 this is my y1 this is my x2 this is my y2 uh, I just want to put the numbers in where they go here now so according to my distance formula I need to take this number and subtract that one so let's see that's going to be 900 900 minus 500 okay and then I'm going to square that I'm going to add that to well this one minus that one so 300 minus 600 and then we're going to square that and then we have to take the square root of all that well this looks like to me it's equal to 400 squared which is going to be 1600 and that looks like to me it's going to be negative 300 but when you square that you get 900 okay and then we take the square root of that we get the square root of 2500 which of course is just simply equal to 500 so that distance from here to here is 500 feet so now we did part B okay so now let's just erase some stuff so I can do the next part here All right things up a little bit uh, how about if we do uh, part C now I'm gonna use red for part C what is the distance what distance do you walk if you go from the medical center to the library medical center to the library uh, if you walk along 4th Avenue so you got to go this way okay and then you got to go that way okay well we already found out that this distance is 500 feet okay that's what we just did from part B what we need to figure out now is the distance from here to here because what happens here let's see where what is the distance to walk from the medical center to the library along 4th Avenue and Main Street round your answer near split okay so we're going this way first and then we're going that way so 
that is the distance we need to find out now. So let's just repeat this process with this distance right here. So use my, my big eraser. And let's just restart this. Okay. So uh, we're going to say it's equal to the square root. All right, so we need some coordinates again. Well, the coordinates of this point, we said before, the x coordinate is 500, and the y coordinate is 600, right? And the coordinates up here at this point, okay, it uh, looks like to me the x coordinate is 700. I'm going to write that right up here 700. And the y coordinate looks like to me right up here is 800. Okay, so my distance formula, I need to take this one and subtract that one. So I get 700 minus 500, right? We could do that in our head, right? So seven, well, I'll just write it out. Minus 500. And then we need to square that. Okay, and then we need to add that to this one, subtract this one. Well, it's going to be 800 minus 600. And then we need to square that. Well, if I did my math right, uh, this is going to be 200. And then you square that. Well, 200 squared is 40,000. And... 800 minus 600, that's another 200, so that's 40,000. So then we take the square root of that. So what we find out, and probably I should use a calculator for this, is uh, that's going to be the square root of like 80,000. Uh, what is the square root of 80,000? Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, I get. This is approximately 282.8 feet. Now, uh, we're supposed to go to the nearest foot, so we found out this distance was 500 feet. Okay, and if we add on the 500 feet, okay, we're going to get 780. Let's see, we've got to round that to the nearest foot. So that's that's gonna change this one to a to a three. You see? Round that to the nearest foot. So uh, if we add these two together then we're gonna get seven hundred and eighty three total feet. Alright, so we found part C. Wow, a lot of work, huh? Now, here's a question. Um, so one of the things we might have been wondering is, this the shortest distance, okay? Well, uh, that's what part D is about. We're trying to figure out, this will turn out to be the shortest distance if those two lines are perpendicular. Remember, the shortest distance is always the perpendicular path. So let's check this out. Um, Let's check this out, um, part D. What we're gonna do is find slope number one and compare it to slope number two. Remember, if slope number one times slope number two is equal to negative one, that would suggest that we have perpendicular lines. So slope number one, um, once again, we need to use the coordinates. So, what are the coordinates of this point? We've had it before. It's, uh, I'm going to write it down here. Nine, 900 and 300. 
Okay. Uh, the coordinates for this point we've had before, it's 500, 600. Okay. So, uh, slope number one, we'll find going this way. So, it's got to be negative because it's going down, right? So remember, it's rise over run, so it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, we get, we're going to subtract these coordinates. So 300 minus 600 over 900 minus 500. Okay, well in this case we get negative 300 over 400. And so I think you can knock off the zeros and so this equals negative 3 fourths. So that's slope number 1. Okay, so let's get back to business. Now what we need to do is find the slope all right, we need to find the slope going the other way now. Um, all right, so what is the slope going this direction now, this slope? So we have the coordinates of this point, and once again, we need the coordinates from this point. So that we said was 700 comma 800. It goes up there, okay, so yeah, 700, 800. So slope number two, remember it's rise over run, so we've got to subtract the y coordinate. So it's going to be 800 minus 600 divided by 700 minus 500. And so this would give us 200 over 200, and that's equal to 1. And you'll notice uh, these are not perpendicular then because it, we'd have to have the reciprocal. Remember, we'd have to have 4 over 3. And remember, one of them has to be negative, one of them has to be positive. We don't have that as our slope. So what it means is that uh, is 4th Avenue perpendicular to Main Street? The answer would be no. Um, because slope 1 and slope 2 are not negative reciprocals of each other or you could say slope number 1 times slope number 2 does not equal negative 1 so there you have it boy these distance ones take a little bit of work so those would be the hardest types of problems you might have on this assignment so um, you have an example in your book as well that you could probably use it's kind of a hokey problem but anyhow uh, let's continue with the lesson wrap things up so how do you find the distance between a point and a line for the coordinate plane write an equation for the line through a given point and perpendicular to the given line find the point of the intersection use the distance formula calculate the distance from a point to that. Well, that can be pretty tough work sometimes. So, um, anyhow, that's the end.